Software videos. Y'all want some content? Even though platform fighters are still relatively new in fighting game history, there are so many mechanics that have been brought to the forefront, especially for defense. Things aren't so cut and dry anymore where the diminishing shield is the only defensive option you could give to people. There's many versions of the shield, there's different sorts of parrying that people have created, and many different even ways to burst out of attacks. Even for the small time that they've been here, so many interesting plays have been made, and it's nice to just get like an overview of everything that Platform Fighters has done. So, let's go over every other like defensive mechanic that has been in Platform Fighters, and let's see their impact in the game in general. Okay, so, the shield. Um... The regular shield diminishing is not bad. In general, there's like just a few bad things that, you know, comes from it. It varies from game to game, like Smash 4 being able to use shield and immediately grab someone, or maybe even in melee, where inconsistent shielding to the cast is like a big thing and it kind of determines tiers sometimes. But there's two ways to look at the original shield. See, consistently, it has the ease of being very simple to understand compared to every single other thing. When you hit the shield, it gets smaller and smaller until the point where it completely breaks and your opponent gets a free option that they can do in order to kill you. Really simple, really easy, fine. The main issue comes from the jank it can show at times though. Like, getting shield poke, that shit can just give you a migraine to deal with sometimes because you're supposed to be given a defensive mechanic to help you out, but if it's just gonna be invalidated sometimes, it just feels awful. Also, the lack of options it can give to projectiles can feel a little rough at times because like legitimately, if the only thing that you're doing in order to try to move against move against a projectile is to use a shield, then it's probably a bad option. Because all you're doing is just standing there and giving more time for the opponent to run at you and grab you while you're shielding. So it's like, the amount of things that you can do revolving around the shield are not too great. Overall, it's not too bad. But other versions are getting way more complicated when it comes to this. Like, in Rivals 2, there's not really much info about the shield, but we do know that the size doesn't change, so you're not gonna get you're gonna you're not gonna get stray hit by like some different aerial, so that's cool. Also, that when you hit it enough, the shield actually cracks until it breaks and you just get a free punish. Which is pretty cool, because again you won't get shield poked, which is a godsend. But what about the shields that aren't spherical? So, the front-facing shield in Frame Makers and Rushdown Revolt don't really break, but they do kind of push you back, which allows your slow ass to get, like, cross-upped, which is a fighting game thing. Uh, the one that's really interesting is probably Nick Brawl, because when you block, the whole character is the shield, and the only way to deal with it is to like push a character so far back that they go into like a tumble animation until they get hit by it. So even if your shield can't break, it doesn't mean that you're always safe, which is pretty interesting and will probably be done a little bit more differently if there's a Nick All-Stars 2. I don't know. I've heard that there's a Nick All-Stars 2, but I don't know. All right, so parries. There's many different types of parries that do different things for a game, but if I had to choose one to be the, the worst, it's probably the Smash Ultimate Parry. I just don't like the fact that I have to shield and then let go of the block button. The timing just feels so off. Plus, you don't really have too many benefits for it. Like, if you parry a special, it doesn't reflect back. And unless you have, like, fast buttons to throw out, uh, the window to counterattack is stringent, so it's like, 
if you're playing Fox and you parry, you'll get way more out of a situation than, say, I don't know, we Fit, you know? I actually like most of the other parries, though. Like, Smash... F like, look at Smash 4. It was actually called Power Shielding. Although you can't reflect a, project a projectile, right? Uh, you actually get your shield like back like your shield doesn't go away if you power shields you just time the attack correctly and if it heals your shield and if it hits your shield at that time then it maintains the size and pushes people back so simple so amazing i don't know why they changed it but there are two types of parry that actually reflect stuff and have other uses and that's the one in rivals and that's the one in rushdown revolt so Rivals is a little different. If you parry certain moves, the opponent kind of stops in their tracks, creating a like a really high octane risk slash reward system. It also like if you parry specials, then they reflect back towards you. So you're kind of incentivized in order to do it, or you can just move around if you really wanted to. Either way, if you get a parry, you'll probably be able to do a lot. As for Rush Down Revolt, its parry system kind of feels like the good version of what ultimate is you can block and you can perform a parry at the same time if you just like if you just tilt the shield downward not only that but you can actually move with the shield so you're not really like committing to a person that's throwing projectiles at you you can actually do something if you really wanted to like it makes a lot of characters that can utilize the time and frames you get to parry. Unlike Ultimate, where it's like you're kind of just standing there with glue on your feet. And here's the final one, Burst. There's only one game that has Burst, and that's Rushdown Revolt. See, combos are so easy to do in this game, and on a really high level of play, it can feel impossible in order to actually come back. Like, you should see some of the things that these players just do. It's, it's, it's screwed up. So, in order to mitigate that, you can press both buttons to interrupt the opponent and send them away while they do a combo. You'd think this be broken, until you realize that you get it once per stock. So it's either you use it up or you waste it. And just like in Smash 4, you can actually bait the opponent in order to use this sort of move so they can't have it again and you can go on like the offensive. So this sort of high octane sort of battling that Rushdown Revolt does, it's, it's, it's accentuated even more because Burst can just be also be used as a thing that just completely screws over the opponent when, it, when the time comes. So this is massive, and I actually wish that a lot more platform fighters did this sort of thing. All right, everyone. That is every single sort of defensive mechanic in Platform Fighters. Let's see if there's any more in the future. I highly really doubt it, but honestly, I don't know. Things could change a lot in the future. I just really hope that people can learn from this sort of thing in order to create better games. And I, I'm looking at you, Smash Ultimate. I'm looking at you. But let's not try to dwell on the plat. Let's not try to dwell on the past.